Hi, now we're going to be continuing with financial maths, focusing on profit and loss. So let's just look at some of the terminology that we need to know when we're working with profit and loss. So first of all, when somebody sells something for more than what they paid for it in the first place, they make a profit. Okay, then the amount that they have increased the price by from what they paid for it is called the markup. And this is generally worked out as a percentage of the amount that they paid for the item in the first place, which is what we call the cost price. So the cost price, if you are going to go and buy something and then try and sell it for a profit, the amount that you paid for it in the first place is what we call the cost price. Then you mark it up by a specific percentage to find what, your, what we call the selling price. So the selling price is the amount that you sell it for. The cost price is how much it cost you in the first place. And if you do manage to sell it for more than what it cost you, that's when you make a profit. If you manage to sell it for some reason for less than what it cost you, then you have made a loss. Okay, so if your selling price is more than the cost price, then you make a profit. If your selling price is less than your cost price, then you make a loss. The selling price and the cost price, um, if you subtract them from each other, you will get either the profit or the loss, depending on which one is higher than the other. Okay. So now let's have a look at an example where we are actually going to work out some things with profit and loss. Okay, so in this example, we've got Andile purchases a chocolate for 10 Rand and sells it for 12 Rand. How much profit did he make and what was the percentage markup? Okay, so first of all, let's work out the profit. So the profit, we work out by saying, the amount that it that he sold it for, which is the selling price, minus how much he paid for it, which is the cost price. Okay, so that's going to be 12 minus 10, which is 2 Rand. So he made a 2 Rand profit on that chocolate when he sold it because he, he bought it for 10 Rand and he sold it for 12 Rand. He made a 2 Rand profit. Now we're going to work out his percentage markup. To work out the percentage markup, we're going to take the amount that he made as profit divided by the amount that it cost him in the first place, the cost price, and times that by 100 to get a percentage. Okay, so that is going to be 2, which we just worked out, divided by 10 times 100, and that gives us a percentage of 20%. So that means that he marked the price of the chocolate up by 20% from what he paid for it um, to get the amount that he was going to sell it for. Okay, now let's have a look at another example. In this example, Patrick sells stationery with a 25% markup. So in this case, tell, they're telling you what the percentage markup is. If he pays 50 Rand for a stapler, how much profit will he make when he sells it? Okay, so first of all, in this case, we know that profit is going to be 25% of the cost price. It's going to be 25% of how much he paid for it because, because they've told us that he is marking it up by 25%. Okay, so it's going to be 25% of the cost price, which in this case was 50 Rand. Okay, so I can say 50 multiplied by 0 0.25. Remember, we can write it as a decimal fraction like that, representing the 25%. And then we're going to go and work that out. And that gives us 12 Rand 50. Now remember, when you're working with money, you always have to show both decimal places. You can't just write one decimal place. Uh, we have to round off to two decimal places unless there are no decimal places or then you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that is um, that example over there. Right, so now we're going to go through one that you're going to do for yourselves, but let's just read through it first quickly. 
So in this example, we've got Andiswa who bakes and sells cookies. The cost of making a batch of 200 cookies, including the ingredients, electricity, packaging, etc., is 150 Rand. She sells the cookies in packs of 10 for 12 Rand each. So the first thing you're going to do is calculate her total profit if she managed to sell all of her cookies. So that's what we're going to work on now, and I'm going to give you one minute to work on that. Okay, so the first thing that you had to do in this example, in order to work out the total profit that she will make as she sells all the cookies, is we need to find out how many packs, because we know the price that she's selling each pack for. So we need to know how many packs she's going to sell. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is work out the number of packs that she sells. And to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to take the total number of cookies that she's made, which is 200, and divide it by the number of cookies that she puts into each pack, which is 10. So that gives us 20 packs. So now we know how many packs she has made altogether. So this question is assuming that she sells all the cookies, which means that she has now, she's sold all of these packs. Now we want to know how much she would be able to sell that for. So the selling price, is how much she sells all of those packs for. So that is 20 times 12. 20 packs at 12 rand each, and that gives you 240 rand. So that's how much she sells all of them for, but that's not her profit. That is the amount that she sold it for. We still have to take into account the amount that it cost her in the first place to make these cookies. So her profit is going to be the selling price minus the cost price. So that is going to be 240, which is what she sold it for, minus 150, which is how much it cost her to make those cookies in the first place, and that gives you 90 Rand. So you should have found that her profit in question A was 90 Rand for selling all of the cookies. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at the next part of the question. So now it says that you need to calculate her percentage markup. Okay, so you need to take what she has made as a profit and work that out as a percentage of her cost price. I'm going to, give, going to give you one minute to work on this. Okay, you should hopefully be done with that. So let's go through question B. So to work out her percentage markup, we're going to take her profit, which was 90, and divide it by the cost price. 
and times that by 100 to get a percentage. So that's 90 divided by 150 times by 100. And that should give you 60%. So that means that she marked the price of the cookies up by 60% based on the amount that it cost her to make them in the first place. Okay, now you're going to do the next part of the question. So let's have a look at that. So the next thing you're going to do is calculate her loss if she only manages to sell six packs of cookies. So now you're going to assume she's only managed to sell six packs of cookies. How much of a loss would she make based on that. Okay, so you have one minute to work that out. Okay, let's go through that question. So in this one, it's very similar to what we did in question A, where in question A, we had to work out the, the selling price and then work out the profit. In this case, we're going to be working out the selling price and then working out the loss. They've already told us the number of packs that she sold. So we don't have to first work out the number of packs. They've told us that. So we can go straight on to working out our selling price. So the selling price is going to be 6 times 12. She sold 6 packs and each pack she sold for 12 rand. So that's going to give us 72 Rand. So that's the total amount of money that she is going to get in. That's her total income. But now the amount of money that she paid to make these cookies in the first place was 150 Rand. So she has made a loss. So her total income was less than her cost price. So therefore she made a loss. Okay, and now we need to work out what that loss is. So her loss is going to be the cost price minus the selling price. Because the cost price is higher, and that's the reason that she's made a loss, so we subtract the selling price from the cost price. And that gives us 150 minus 72, which gives us 78 rand. So she made a loss of 78 Rand because she only managed to sell six packs of her cookies. Okay, now we're going to go on to the last question, which is question D. So for this one, it says, how many packs of cookies does she need to sell to avoid making a loss? In other words, for her to break even. Now, if you break even, it means that you don't make a loss. You also don't necessarily make a profit. It just means you don't make a loss. Okay, so you breaking even is just recovering your costs, basically. So we need to work out how many packs of cookies she needs to sell in order to recover the costs that she had for making those cookies. So in order to get back her 150 Rand, how much does she need to sell? Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to work that out.
Okay, so let's go through that last question. So first of all, we need to work out how many packs she needs to sell to get 150 Rand. Now, if we know that each pack is 12 Rand, we can take that 150 Rand that she needs to get back and divide it by 12 to find out how many packs she needs to sell. So 150 divided by 12, that gives you 12.5. Okay, so that means that to break even, in other words, to not make a loss, she needs to sell 12 and a half packs, but now she's not selling half packs, she's selling full packs. So we need to round this off in such a way that she will still not make a loss. So we can't round down because if we round down, then she's not going to have sold enough to be able to avoid making a loss. So we have to round up. Even if this was 12.1, we would still have to round up because if we round down, then she's making a loss and we want to know how many packs she needs to sell to avoid making a loss. So now we can say, therefore, she needs to sell 13 packs to avoid making a loss. If she sells less than 13 packs, she will make a loss. If she sells 13 or more packs, then she will not, then she will not make a loss. Okay. If she sells 13, she won't necessarily make a very big profit, but at least she won't be making a loss. She'll have recovered her costs. Okay, so that's how we work with profit and loss. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.